I've been out of town for about a week and it feels like I haven't sewn or vlogged in such a long time. I got off the plane yesterday and I went to Hobby Lobby and I saw this really nice faux leather and I was like, oh, this would be so cute in like some faux leather leggings. And I was like, I could see that with like some boots and a sweater, like a big oversized sweater or something. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I decided to go ahead and pick up the faux leather and I took it home and I threw it in the washing machine right away. It did say that the fabric needed to be hand washed, so I made sure to use the hand wash setting on my machine. And then I put the fabric in the dryer, but I put it on no heat. So now I am ready to go ahead and start laying out the fabric and getting the pattern all cut out. I'm using a McCall's leggings pattern that I love. I'm making view C, which has like a slouchy leg bottom, which I think is really cute. One of the views, I think it's view A, has a fly front zipper. And then the other view, I think it's view B, has a zipper at the ankle. So all the looks to me are really cute, but I've only made view C. So this would be like my second or third time making this pattern. The other thing I love about this pattern is that it's only one pattern piece that you need for view C. I have my one pattern piece laid out. I did cut out a size small, but I think I want to decrease the size. I want the pants to be a size between the small and the extra small. So I traced out the pattern with this tracing wheel, this chalk tracing wheel, and I traced around the whole pattern. Now I'm going to remove the pattern and then I'm just gonna go around. I won't need to decrease anything at the waist, but the curve here and the curve over here, I'm going to come in probably a quarter inch on each of these edges. And then for the side here and the side here, I think I'm going to come in a half inch. So I'll remove this paper. I'm just going to use the seam gauge to come in the amount that I want to come in here on this curve and I'll do the same thing on these edges and then I'll just cut everything out after that. I just placed the seam gauge along this finished edge and then I drew a line up here at the top and I did this all the way down. For this curve here, I did a quarter inch and then when I got down here, I just blended into the original curve. Now I can cut everything out and sew this up and I don't think it's gonna take that long so I'm looking forward to how these are gonna look. And I did not need to take anything off the hem and as I mentioned before, I didn't take anything off the waist. I have the two legs cut out. One curve is your front crotch curve and then this curve here is your back curve. And so then I'm going to flip this over and stitch this seam down here. And I'll do the same thing on this leg. And then I will flip one of the legs inside out and slide it inside of the other leg so that I can stitch the crotch curve or the crotch seam completely closed. Then I can do the waistband here, which just requires you to just fold over the top edge. And it calls for three fourths of an inch wide elastic. So I'll put that through the waist and then I'll hem the pants and then I can try them on. I sewed a sample and it looks really good from the other side here. However, if I do use the white thread and I have any type of pull in my fabric when I'm wearing it, then the white thread on the serger is going to show up. So I'm actually gonna just go ahead and change the thread in my serger to something darker. Here are the leggings paired with just a t-shirt that I had in my closet. Here's the back. I'm always standing on my tippy toes because I try to imagine what the garment would look like if I had on heels. So I'm constantly walking around on my tippy toes. But yeah, I'm really happy with the way that they turned out. 
They do fit snug around the ankle. So if you do plan to make these, just make sure you'll be able to get your foot through the bottom opening. I had some scraps left over from a dress that I made. This is modal knit from Joanne Fabrics. And I just had enough to do the front pieces and then the sleeves. And for the back, I just used a different piece of knit that I had. And I took a Berta pattern and then I changed the neckline to create this like wing here to have it flap out. And then I just made this cardigan. I tried to get creative with the sleeves. So I put one sleeve in green and white and one sleeve in white and green. Now I don't think I'll wear this with the pants, but since I was sharing some sewing makes, I thought I would throw this one in here too. So you can see something else that I made out of scraps. This is a simplicity sweater that I made years ago from this fabric that I found at Hobby Lobby. I can see myself wearing this sweater with these pants and some booties. Here's how it looks in the back. And this sweater and this fabric is really warm. And this sweater is also something that was very, very easy to make. And when I made it initially, it was long and I shortened it. So yeah. Here is another simplicity top. I didn't iron this, but hopefully you can get the idea of how it looks. I can see wearing this with the pants. I also made the dress that comes with this pattern. I've worn the dress more than I've worn the top. But I thought the baby doll look of the top would look really nice with the slim pants. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. With the booties again, that would be so cute, I think. Here's a closer look at the finished pants. This faux leather is so nice. It's like a really good quality. It doesn't feel fake and it looks real in my opinion. And it's nice and comfortable because it has the stretch in it. So yes, thank you Hobby Lobby. I can even see going back and getting a little bit more of this fabric. Maybe I can make like a dress or I don't know, something because it's just so nice. I love it, love it, love it. I'm going to a birthday party later this evening and I'm going to wear this dress that I made recently. It's the hoodie dress with the gathered ruffles at the bottom. And for shoes, I decided to just wear these clear sandals. I have a errand to run before the party. So I'm actually gonna call my aunt back cause she texted me. So let me see if I can catch her, see how she's doing. I'm just gonna wear some jeans and a shirt, something simple. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm doing just fine. Good, I love you. I love you. Yeah, did you enjoy your uh, gathering yesterday? My husband likes these socks from the Vans store. They're called No Show Socks. And I got him a pack of white and also a pack of black. And apparently they really stay on your feet and don't slip down into your shoes. We're going to a surprise birthday party. I forgot to mention that it's supposed to be a surprise. So I'm hoping we're able to pull it off and that the person is just like, totally blown away and just shocked. That's what I'm hoping for. People are walking in at the same time as the birthday person. So I think the surprise has been blown. I think you can kind of figure out what's going on. So the party was a success. I was eating a salad and I had some French dressing and I got some on my dress right there. It's just a little spot. Hopefully it'll come out just fine. But yeah, the birthday guy said he actually was surprised, so I'm happy about that. But I'm getting ready to get ready for bed. This is 
is a dress that I made. I'll put it up on the screen. And I wear this now for pajamas. But I like it. I love this gingham print. But yeah, this is my nightgown. So I'm about to get ready and call it a night. <laughs>